Hey, it's Kendrick with Technology Interpreters. And so today we're going to be hacking Amazon S3 buckets. This is going to be taking place on Hack the Box 3. That's the name of the server. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is we need to do our reconnaissance. And so we're going to go ahead and Control Shift V. This is going to be using a sudo nmap minus SV, which remember gives us the version of the software. And then here is the IP address. We'll start this and we'll run this command. This shouldn't take long. All right, that was super quick. Thanks to YouTube time. So what we're seeing here is that we've got port 22 open, which is, which is SSH. And we've got port 80 open, which is hack the box. Uh, I'm sorry, Apache version 2.4.29. So our next step is they want us to use the web analyzer tool. And we're going to pull information off it using this plugin. So I'm going to walk you through this process. So we'll open our browser, open a new window, and we'll drop it in here. And this is the address web we. I'm sorry, w a p p a l y z e r dot com slash apps. Okay, for those of you that are listening, those that might be watching it on your screen, and that gets us here. And we want to download this for Chrome. So we go ahead and select Chrome, and it takes us to this page. So I actually made a mistake. I'm so used to using Chrome. That's not correct. We want to use Firefox for this tutorial because that's what's installed on Kali by default. Now I'll quickly pause the video and remove the extension so I can do it, but it'll show up in the top right hand corner. So go ahead and click add to Firefox. This box appears here, click add. And you see your page refreshes and it'll show up over here in the top right hand corner. Go ahead and click the OK about the extension. And now we're going to go back to the web page that we were looking for. So we got this and now we have the IP address of the server. So let's open this uh, in a new window. Close that one. Go ahead and paste the IP address, which we copied from the hack the box interface. And so what this shows is this is some kind of band website does registrations or something like that. So we're going to start poking around to see if we can find anything that's interesting. Now, what it emphasizes here is once we get to the page, let's use this analyzer tool, pull it up. Um, since anonymous, uh, I don't want to send information to anybody. So it shows us that we're using Apache, but you know, what? it doesn't show us what I'm looking for, which is the fact that we're going to be using PHP. Let's see if we got more information. Don't get any of that out of this. So I'll show you where this differs from the tutorial a little bit. If you look here, it shows just Apache. If you go to the tutorial, it shows that the program language is with PHP. So really, I just think they've upgraded it and they've kind of locked some of the features behind the paywall. So either way, it wants you to know they're using PHP. The second thing it wants you to do on the site is it wants you to scroll down and it wants you to look, let's see, do we have a, oh, sorry, the toppers page. We want to scroll, scroll to the bottom and we're looking at this. And so this is really good because this is the kind of way you need to think. Like a lot of times email domains reveal a lot about the internal network. Now, typically a lot of organizations emails won't match the, uh, like the domain address that they use internally, but Hey, we've got this. And so what we need to do is we need to be able to configure it so that we are, that we can translate and see stuff that's actually part of this domain, because right now we don't have the DNS or we don't have a host file that's going to allow us to browse a .htb file. And we're about to change that right now. But I think it's first good to test it. So, all right, let's test and see what comes. Well, sorry. So let's put in the toppers.htb and I'll show you why we need to do this because if we put this in right now and try to go to that root domain, we don't get anything. It just goes to a search and we can also put HTTP toppers.htb. And so the thing is, it doesn't have the ability to resolve that. So that's why we got to add a host name entry. And that's what we're going to do now. The way that we do that is we're going to go here. I'm going to open a new tab because once again, once I do my MAP scan, I like to keep it on a separate tab so that I can refer to it later. Now this command is going to simply add an entry to the host file. So let me explain what, the, oh, wow. That's the last tutorial. <laughs> so let me explain what this does. So echo means and when you do the echo command, let's just demonstrate this because it's really important that you see and that you understand. So if I say echo, hello, it says hello, get it? So with this command, control shift V, we're going to echo and it's going to just print this out, echo. 
and then the IP address, make sure that matches the IP address of the box we're actually hacking, 10.129.227.248. Let's confirm that. Okay, that's good. Space the toppers.htb, and then we're gonna pipe this into a pseudo command. And basically, we're gonna take what was printed out, which honestly, when we do the echo command, echo command, it just prints this out. And then we're going to add this to this file. So sudo means we're using root privileges. The T command with the dash A, the dash A means to append. So we're gonna take the input from this command here. We're gonna then put it in this file. But before we do that, let's, let me show you this. Let's look what's in the file already. Slash so Etsy host. All right, so that's what's in the file. And what's gonna happen here is it's gonna add a whole new entry at the bottom of this file. And this is gonna be allow us to resolve the host name, which is the toppers.hdb to an IP address, which is the IP address of the server, and will allow us to view the website. I hope this makes sense, a lot of information, but let's go ahead and let's do it. So we'll paste that command again. If that runs successfully, since it's a pseudo command, we do need to do that. Now let's go ahead and cat sc.hd, uh, and there we go, the toppers.htb. So now when we put this into our web browser, it's gonna know that when I want to go to the toppers.htb, I wanna go to this IP address, and the website should work. So now let's go back here and refresh. And it's still, oh, well, we don't have www in there. Let's get rid of that. Still don't, so now we got to do some trouble. I also noticed that it's HTTPS and this is not secure. So let's try that again. And there we go. So now we're able to go to it by the toppers.htb. So you saw two things that were obstacles, right? So it put www in front of it and then it tried to put HTTPS and this is, there is no SSL. There's no secure website here. This is just port 80, which means you have to take out the S on HTTP. So now let's go to our next step. We're going to use GoBuster to be able to identify any like, you know, we're gonna do basically directory enumer well, directory enumeration. But there's something else it wants us to point out. And so this is gonna get us on a path to actually identifying that as the S3 bucket. So I'm gonna to go to a new tab and let's copy the next command. And we're gonna be using GoBuster. So if you don't have GoBuster installed, just type GoBuster, press en enter. And if it's not installed already, it'll get installed but you should be going through these tutorials like in order, but you might've reset your VM set afterwards. So basically what we're doing is we're gonna use the GoBuster and we're gonna do is trying to identify virtual host minus W is the word list. And this word list right here, top million dot text. So the thing is they leave out, where do you find this word list? So let's try to find it. So I'm gonna copy the name of this subdomains right here. I'm gonna copy this control shift C and then I'm going to erase this because a lot of these things, if it didn't tell you to go get it, then it's probably located on the machine. So you can try to locate command. And we'll try to control shift V that. I need to clear that out. Let's clean this up just a little bit. I think it's uh, just subdomains top. 1 million, okay, so this is all stuff I need to get rid of. Okay, all right, so I can do that. Locate didn't work. I'll go to CD root, and then I'll do a find, pipe, grep, and I'll do subdomain, control shift V. And okay, so that didn't work because I need a sudo, sudo. And once again, there's probably a better way to do this, but I'm just sharing what I know at the time, okay? So on the channel, I can only show you what I know so hopefully this will help some of you to get past it. But how do they, they they give you the name of the file in the tutorial, but they don't tell you what to find it and stuff like that. Or maybe they, uh, yeah, they're saying it's part of sec list already. So we'll, we'll see. Okay, so that didn't work. I didn't find it. So let's see, do I have sec list still down? Let's go to home, Cali. And let's see if I have sec list downloaded. So this kind of builds on a previous tutorial. I think it's in downloads. All right, okay, so I don't have it there. So yeah, it looks like I reset my VM, so I don't have secular, so I might have to grab this. 
So I actually did some checking and here's what I was able to find. It's the, the guy says 1 million. It spells out the word million. That's not the case. It's top 1 mil. And I wasn't able to find the file that they showed once again, because I think we're going to need to download Sackless if we're going to do that. So let's do it the correct way and let's get Sackless. All right. So I'm going to walk you through this entire process. So let's go to, let's close out. Let's go to CD home Cali. All right. Once we're here, we're going to go to the top. We're going to open a new tab and we're going to type sec list. And that's going to take us to the website right here. Daniel Misser, Maser. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but go ahead and click on that link right there. Make sure you're going to get github.com and not some other site that might be trying to trick you. And once you're there, you can go to code right here and it gives you this to copy. And what you simply want to do is for this, once again, I always encourage you when you're doing these exercises, let's make a folder called three M K D I R T H R E E L S. All right. So now we've got the three folder. We'll jump inside L S nothing's there. And we're going to type get G I T clone C L O N E. And we want to paste what we copied from there. And if this works out right, we're going to actually bring down the entire sec list file. This is going to take a second. So we're going to use YouTube magic to skip ahead. Okay. So now we got sec list downloaded. Our next step is we need to do LS. Make sure we see it. We're going to go into the sec list folder and actually we can't, we cannot do that. Let's go back and let's do a find. All right. Grip subdomains. And cause we just want to search this folder. So that was a quick way to be able to search the entire sec list folder. And now that we've searched that, I think we've got, this is what we're looking for, right? So this actually matches the tutorial. So this is really important. Go ahead and copy this all the way and leave the dot. Okay. Control shift C. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And now that I've got this, uh, I'm going to change the location and I'll show you what my new file location is. All right. Cause it's gotta be relevant to where we are in the tutorial. So now take a look at this. This is going to be the new command. Okay. So go buster. And I actually don't need the slash right there. Since this is one folder down, I can take this out because anytime you're referencing a folder, that's one level below where you are, you can take that part off. So sec list minus virtual host is what I'm trying to look for and identify and enumerate minus W and sec list discover DNS domains. This is where the, the sec list file is within the sec list folder that I downloaded. And then minus U for the URL of the place that I'm trying to use this word list. So W is word list. U is URL. And this is our target destination. So let's go ahead and run this. All right. And so we got our command successful and we're going to let this run for a while and we'll talk about the result. Okay. So our scan is finished. And what we want to emphasize here is that it found two domains here. Okay. One is the topper. So S3 dot the toppers HTB. So in order for us to view this, so this is a subdomain. Remember we first, we've added a host entry for this, but anything dot the domain.com is considered a subdomain. So the toppers dot hack the hack the box is the domain or HTB S three dot the toppers HTB is a subdomain. You can make a unlimited number of subdomain one, two, three dot the toppers HTB. You can do all those, but in order for this to work, we, we can't view this. So let's test it again. Make sure you fully understand because we've got to control shift C add this to our host file in order for it to work. So when I put this up and I'm going to put, remember it's going to try to put www.http and all that S in front of it. So we're going to put HTTP colon slash slash because this is not a secure website. So by us typing that ahead of time, we eliminate the fact that uh, Firefox or Chrome or whatever is going to try to append a S right there. So we know that doesn't work. So now the next step is we need to add this to our host file and you just saw how I did this before. So I'm just going to run the command at this point. So I'm going to keep this open control plus plus plus, you know, the routine there and I'm going to control shift V to paste this. So now what I'm doing is I'm adding with the IP address. Once again, that needs to be the IP address of the server from here. I'm appending this and I'm doing S3 dot the toppers at HTB. And so basically when a computer goes to S3 dot the toppers at HTB, it's going to be able to know that it's going to this IP address and it's going to be able to interpret it correctly because the, the headers, I believe is what allows you to be able to see the website, even though it's there, 
you can't really see it. So let's go ahead and run this command. All right, and so now we'll do a cat Etsy host. Uh, okay, well, let's make sure. Oh, out of CD, let's let's try this again. I don't want to see this cat slash Etsy host. All right, and so now look what we got. We got S3, that's the choppers are HTB. So now when we go back here, so since we've added that to our host file, oh, great, great. So now we can see status equals running. That's really good. So what we're doing is since we know this is on an S3 bucket, Amazon, let's explain a little bit what an S3 bucket is. An S3 bucket is a storage location within Amazon. That's all it is. And so for instance, a website is essentially just a group of files. And so if you want to create a website, you can then create an S3 bucket, put the destination of the website to be those files. And then a web server, when you go to something.com, it then uses that and goes to your S3 bucket to pull those web files. Okay. So now that we've done it, let's take another look back at our, our GoBuster too, because make sure we got everything here. All right. That all looks good. So our next step is we're going to go and we're going to get into the Amazon CLI. So this is a cool tool. The way that you do this is we're going to do an APT install Amazon CLI. Let's open a new tab. Once again, I'm a, I'm a tab guy. I'm going to get away from this at some point and start using the right tool. But in the meantime, Okay, so could not open. Okay, so do we need to sudo? Okay, so just keep in mind, you do need to sudo when you installed Amazon uh, CLI. And I don't believe that was in the instructions. This shouldn't be long. Okay, maybe it will be, we'll see, we'll speed it up. Okay, so that was done. If this is successful, I should be able to type AWS configure. And anytime it turns green, it tells me that the CLI program is installed. If it was incorrect command, the AWS would show up in red. All right. So for this, it basically, if you were doing this in an actual environment, you would need uh, several things. So you need the access key. We're going to type temp here. You would need a secret key. You would need the default region name and you would need the output format. I don't know if you actually need to implement all three, all four of those. So now that I've done that, I've configured my AWS CLI. So now I'm going to show you, I'm going to break this down. This is really cool because we're going to be able to run an LS command on the AWS S3 bucket. And so what we've done is AWS, and this is how you reference it. Okay. AWS dash dash endpoint, which is our location. So this is remember we, this is the Amazon S3 bucket, which is just a storage location in Amazon. So, this is the entire command right here. And then everything, this is the location really. Okay, so this is using the AWS CLI tool to reference the, reference the location. And then this is the actual command that we're running, which is the list directory. So now that we've done that, that's great. So the next step is we want to see what's in this. Uh, I forgot what they referenced, what they called it, but this is a container. So let's, let's find out the exact term. Okay, so for your future certification needs, it's called an object. So these are objects that are under the S3 bucket. And this is the object that we want to reference. So the next command, you're going to see, remember, all the way up until this point is the command, is the location. Everything after this, so ls, we're listing the directory of the object under the S3 bucket. So let's run that command. Okay. So this shows us that we have, this is what gives us the indicator that this is a website, right? It's a, this is a root directory because in the root of websites, you're usually gonna have like an index.php, index.default.html, HTML, default.php, default.html. Those are the type of files we're looking for. So that's something that gives us an indicator. Now this is a command I'm gonna try to break down because what this does is this allows us to use um, this PHP like header file to inject commands. You see what we got right here? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna output and we're gonna use this command and we're gonna create a local file in the directory that we're in. Remember in the, wait, let's do this. Make sure I explain this. So we're in the PWD. We're in the home Cali location. When I do this, this is gonna like take this command right here, everything that's here, echo, remember, between this, and we're gonna output this 
to a file called shell.php. Let's run the command. Let's list the command. And there's shell.php. So the next step is we actually want to copy this file from our directory here to the Amazon S3 bucket. So here we go. This is the CLI command for Amazon X S3 all the way from here to here. And it won't copyright because I keep going off script. Okay, uh, we're just gonna, just gonna scratch that, okay? Because I keep going off. So anyway, and then right here at S3, and we're gonna copy shell.php, and we don't have to put a path because it's in the same folder, to the object, which is S3 colon topper.php. So we're gonna copy it here. And if everything goes right, this should copy from our machine to the Amazon S3 bucket, which is why you, it's very important to secure S3 buckets because people can compromise them. This is how people get on S3 buckets that are unsecured or that are improperly configured, download people's files, passwords, database files, everything. So this is a great tutorial. I love that they did this. So now that we've copied this, we want to validate that we can actually see our PHP file from the web, right? This is a real type scenario. I love it. So there is the, uh, okay, so we didn't get an error. So this lets us know that shell.php file has been copied there. And so now we're gonna go one step further and we're gonna actually run a command within the shell.php file. So let's get rid of that. That's, that's no, no bueno. Okay, there we go. So, and what we're doing is we copied that shell.php file so that we could send commands to it. And so this is the website, right? Slash shell.php, that's the file we copied. And then question mark command equals, and after this, this is the command that's going to get processed right here in this, like in this PHP header file that we created within shell.php. So when we run this, it should, it shouldn't do anything there. It should be run in your browser, sorry. So we'll copy this and this comes back. And so it runs the ID command and that brings us back this input. So ID is a command that you can run uh, in S3 buckets and it tells us a lot of information about this. So now that we've done this, we're gonna need our actual local address because what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a reverse shell that's gonna connect back to our computer and it's gonna give us access to this to be able to do some other nefarious things if we were a bad person, bad, you know, I say bad person, they would say bad guy. So ifconfig is the command we're gonna type this gives us the IP address of our tunnel, which our VPN tunnel, but that's what we need to do here. In other situations, it may be your ethernet that adapter that you'll use. But since we're using a VPN, which you should always be doing when you're hacking, <coughs> okay, then you need to make sure you use the tunnel address or the VPN address. So now that we know our address, we've got to create a new file and uh, we're going to create a reverse shell that's going to report back to our address. Let's make sure I get this right. So let's open a new tab and let's walk through creating a reverse shell. This is gonna be fun. So we're gonna do basically bash. You just gotta type the documentation because I'll be honest, this is beyond me. I'm not to the point where I actually understand all the commands related to this, but you can look it up. But either way, it's gonna create a reverse shell and this is gonna be mod pre address and this is gonna be a port that it's gonna call back on. So we're gonna create that. Okay, no such file or directory. So hold on, let me make sure I fix it. Okay, so I'm looking at the documentation. I guess they just expect you to know this point, but we're gonna see if we can do this and we can outpoint this to shell.sh. So no bueno on that. All right, let's try something else. Okay, I was just looking through the command. I think what we're gonna have to do is an echo here, control shift V that, and then pipe out a shell. Pipe that to, uh, let's see if we can do this. Okay, close. Uh, I think I just need, well, I don't pipe, I need to output this to shell.sh. Okay, let's see if that worked. Uh, let's cat shell.sh. Okay, all right, so that's our, that's our file that we're gonna need to copy to the server to make this work. So now that we've got that, we need to create a netcat listener. So this is gonna be on our server and we're gonna be listening for this file to call back to our server. So that's why it was important to make sure you understood what just happened, okay? 
So on our file, on our device, this we're going to drop this file on the server and then we're going to execute this file and then it's going to call back to us. OK, so with that being the case, we're going to go increase that. We're going to start our netcat listener and the ports have to be the same. If you notice on that file, we use 1337 for the port. So now that we've got this, I don't like that because I made a typo. OK, so now we got something listening on that port. And so we got to bring up us a web server. So we got to open a new tab. So now that we got the file, now we got to open up the web server. And actually, I'll take that back. We're not copy. We're going to make the we're going to try to make this device contact us. And that's what's going to allow us to do what we need to. Either way, we'll work through it. So I'm learning too. So forgive me. So what this does is brings up a web server on our device. So now we got a netcat listener. We got our own web server so that you can actually reach into our computer and get that file that we want to maliciously do things to you. And then the last thing is I've got to, I'm going to modify this and put my IP address in so you can see the whole command. But I'm going to go and I'm going to access the website. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to take this, open a new tab at this point. I'm going to paste it in. Let's break it down. So the shell.ph topper, shell.php file, command equals curl. And what it's going to do, it's going to reach back to my computer, right? This is my IP address. Uh, uh, wait, 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 hold on a sec. I think that's right. Cause it's going to, instead of the curl, it's going to put a space in that curl command. Yeah, that's good. So basically we're going to make the website connect to our computer using a curl command on port 8,000, which is our website and download this shell file and give us a reverse shell. Let's see if this actually works. Okay. So we need to be watching. I'm going to make the screen take up two parts because I want you to see this in real time. All right. So I'm going to move this over. I'm going to refresh this. Probably easier just to move. Okay. Let, let me organize this because I really want you to see this stuff as it's happening. And we don't necessarily want to look at the worst, the web server. You want to look at the netcat listener right here. Okay. So we'll see both. All right. So let's go ahead and let's press enter here. Wow. We got it. Did you see how quick that was? That was amazing. So we did get a reverse shell. Let's open this up. And so now we actually are connected to the server. So we can do an LS command and wow, we can, we can see stuff. And so we need to navigate the folder folders here. So I got index.php, but I want to look in the root of the web folder. So I'm going to do here. Now let's, oh, look at that. I've got a flag.txt file. And so I, let's see if I can run a cat flag.txt. And there's the flag for this box. So this one was a little bit more complicated. Going to control shift Z. It's not over yet. Remember, we got to answer this. And by the way, Something you need to look on your web server when you run it locally, you're looking for a 200 command. Okay. So it's a couple of things you're going to see. So if you're a netcat listener, if you're, when you're running your web server and you start your netcat listener and you start your web server and you don't see a 200 come across the website, the web server, which means it's successfully connected to your web server to pull whatever file, this can help you in troubleshooting that. But now that we've got all this, let's go ahead and finish up the video and let's answer the question. So how many, TCP ports are open. I think I saw two ports, but let's not think. Let's know because we're going to be good hackers. Port 22 and port 80 is what I see. Two, let's submit the answer. It said no. How many TCP ports are open? I saw two. Let's figure out why it thinks that we're wrong. All right, so how many TCP ports are open? That's very straightforward. I'm looking here. TCP 22 is open. TCP 80 is open. I, I don't see anything else. I see two ports. Uh, let's see what the, the hack the box wants. Let's try it again. Two ports. Okay. It took it that time. Okay. That was interesting. What is the domain of the email address provided in the contact section? So let's make sure we get all this correct. Right? So, you saw it. It was on the topper's website. It was at the very bottom. And the email address was 
mail dot mail at the topper dot htb. So that's our second answer. And I think it was just the, the domain. So they want the domain. So it's the toppers dot htb. And let's make sure it's toppers. Make sure I got that right. The toppers, T O P P E R S dot htb. All right. That looks good. Submit that. Okay. In the absence of a DNS server, which Linux file can be used to resolve hostname to IP address in order to be able to access websites that point to these hostname? And this is, we did this many times, slash so Etsy host with an S. Very, very important, host. What, which subdomain is discovered during further enumeration? S3 dot the toppers dot htb was the name of the subdomain. Remember, that was part of our scan. Let's see our GoBuster scan. So let's find out. This is why I like to leave this open right here. So S3 dot the toppers dot HTB. We can just control shift C that. Go back here, paste it in, and that should be correct. Which service is running on the discovered subdomain? Uh, I think we're, this is going to be where they're looking for Amazon S3. Okay, cool. Which command utility can be used to interact with the service running on the discovered domain? You remember this was the Amazon CLI? That might be incorrect because, uh, okay, it's Amazon CLI, but let's see what they're looking at, looking for. AM, it's probably like AMZN CLI or something like that. Let's see. I know what it is. Oh, AWS CLI is what you're looking at. AWS CLI. That's the correct answer. Okay. Which command is used to set up an AWS CLI connection? Uh, they want you to do AWS configure. Remember we typed that. And we use enter like temp, 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 temp. But you need to have those actual settings if this were a real scenario. What is the command used by the above utility to list the S3 buckets? The above utility to list the S3 bucket. So it was, uh, I'm trying to figure out what they want. It's something LS, right? The command used by the above utility to list the S3 bucket. So I don't see enough. So I guess it's S3, it's four words. I don't know. I'm stumped by this one. I think I'm going to try because I think if when I look at the command, it's AWS and then it's LS and S3 without all the switches and stuff like that. Uh, not that one too. All right. So let's jump over to our actual documentation to go back when we ran through those commands. Let's see if we can indicate or find exactly what they're looking for. Because this one is kind of stumped to chump. All right, so this is when we're creating our reverse shell at this point. This is our GoBuster scan. So those command, okay, should be somewhere in here. I'm going to actually take the hint on this one because I, I actually don't know. Refer to the official CLI documentation for AWS. Okay. Wow, they're going to send us on a wild goose chase because... I see I've got all the commands documented here. I, I do these before I do the tutorials. So I just think that what they're asking, I'm not interpreting it correctly. So let's look at the documentation to see what we need here. Now, this is exactly what I just said, right? AWS S3 LS. That's literally what I just said. So, okay, maybe it was just something like there was a special character here. I took a hint for nothing. See, AWS. S3 LS. Once again, I don't get, I literally just typed that. Wow. Okay. So if I, if I made a typo, let me know in the video because maybe y'all see something that I missed. Okay. Uh, this service configured to run files written in what web scripting technology? We this PHP because you remember we looked at the web analyzer tool, but it doesn't show that anymore. And then the root flag, which you capture control V which I don't have anymore. So let's go get it again. I still got it here. 
This is why I use the multiple tags so I can tab so I can always go back and refer to it. Control Shift C. And yo, get ready for it. This is a proud moment. All right. So I grab my phone so I can record this for TikTok. This is another one down. Let's submit the flag. Let's paste it. There's the flag. And the magic, where is it? I don't know if you can hear it. Like it gives a little sound and everything. You on the video are hearing it. I'm actually about to be recording this for TikTok. Don't forget to follow technology interpreters just like here on TikTok. But that is another one down. This was hack the box three has been pawned. All right. So with that, those are all the questions, guys. Thank you so much for all the support on the channel. The channel is growing, even though it's slow. But once again, I want to do very detailed tutorials for you. So give me some feedback. So I, I love the comments. They're starting to come in. So keep on sending them. And by the way, oh, hey, moving on to tier two. Let's go. Anyway, thanks for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe.